Hey, hey y'all. y'all! And welcome to the Sorry Not Sorry Generation podcast, where we bring you a not so healthy dose of humor and reality as we get our hands dirty with some serious nostalgia and question everything. Let's dive in. Hey y'all! Hey y'all! It's Misty. It's Bonnie. And today we are going to do something slightly different. Normally, we kind of react as we're live watching something. However, we're going to try it slightly differently. And we are going to talk about a show Ani and I have just gotten through watching. And we watched the first episode of. And it is a childhood classic, at least for me. It was Ani's first time watching it. But one of my, sure. one of my favorite shows from a kid of all time is Zaboomafu with the Krat Brothers. And... I, it's from originally from 1999 and I guess it only aired until 2001, which is a little wild because I really just thought it was on longer than that. But yeah, we watched the very first episode and Ani had never seen it until now. So Ani, what did you think? Everything I wrote down. Keeping in mind, like this show again, is from 1999. So there's a little bit of that. Some of the animation, for instance, <laughs> is a little old school. So everything that I wrote down on first watch of this show that I've heard of over the years, but I've never actually watched because who okay. knows why. Maybe we should tell people what the show is first. Uh, or... Yes, tell them, Misty, what Zabumafu Zabumafu was a show on PBS Kids, and it was a like a nature animal show. And it was these two brothers, Chris and Martin Kratt, and they, with a lemur named Zabumafu, and they just basically introduce kids to, like, a bunch of different animals and tell you a whole bunch of different, like, animal facts, and, like, it's a lot of fun to, like, watch, in my opinion, and it's, but they actually tell you, like, real animal facts and not just, like, stupid little facts, and they tell you uh, a whole bunch of different animals in one episode, and Zabumafu is a ring-tailed lemur who is a real lemur and was a real lemur on the show. However, they also have a puppet version of him because he talks to the Krat brothers as they go and they meet all these different animals and stuff like that. So it's like a kid's animal educational show. So on yes, a- think, uh, think of, okay. okay I animal the planet. Or anything. It, it's death. Okay. I was going to say like animal it's planet for really, kids, you know, it's like a park attraction. Like mm-hmm. when you go to a theme park and they have like an animal show, like you get to meet all the animals that come on stage and they do tricks, but mm-hmm. on crack because it's a set. Yeah, um, yeah. and some interesting yeah. animation and puppets uh-huh. and some that whole yeah, Gumby because... clay. In it's literally claymation on like a, on an acid trip. Well, I was gonna say yeah. think of the Bugs Life show from Disney. Like it just kind of reminded oh, me of that. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like the movie, and I'm like, in what? No, way? the the show in Animal Kingdom, the Bugs Life show in Animal Kingdom. If anybody's been there and seen that, like it's kind of educational because it does teach you about the bugs, but it's also a little wild and weird too. So, I'm gonna take a page out of your book and on what I'm gonna call my first impression of this show: Sesame Street meets Barney, created by Animal Planet, produced by the Irwins. <laughs> Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> that is pretty like, much what it would be. It honestly, be acid- who decided that the acid trip claymation was a good idea? Like, I, I Narchi, don't know where the Narchi, claymation came I don't from. Know, I don't know what he is, but Narchi has no eyeballs. You're not wrong. Narchi has and no eyeballs. And then his other friend, whatever his name is, his jaw unhinges mm-hmm. to like a bucket to catch yeah. It's very- There's also a dinosaur and some kind of prehistoric ostrich and yeah, and then Zabumafu and the ostrich and Zabumafu's claim is way too chill for the rest of this. Well, yeah, like Zabumafu and Archie and like the purple creature and the ostrich chicken, they're all about the same size too. <laughs> which just makes you a little he's a little confusing and like the T-Rex isn't that much bigger than Zabumafu to be fair in the little claymations but the 90s man they just had something really weird about the claymations where it looks like Gumby and looks like Play-Doh if it was animated like anybody who's seen like those old school like Rudolphs and stuff like that too like how it's just very clearly fake and then like it 
they somebody's moving it around. It's it's that. It's basically just that. Like and, I loved Gumby as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like Gumby was a, an old school staple of our childhoods. But, old, old. But yeah, that Plato style claymation is just it's something else. That's for sure. So what else I, you got? That was really it. Like the the episode. I, mean, I like it. it. It's definitely giving. It's definitely a thing of of its time. It's mm-hmm. obviously a kids in yeah in informational show. Yeah. Talking about animals, teaching about animals and this mm-hmm. and that. And like I'm just sitting here as a thirty four year old feeling like I'm nine years old again or younger mm-hmm. watching shows like this and all I can think of is like I said, Barney, Sesame Street, mm-hmm. Gullah Gullah Island, Out of the Box, uh yeah. just shit like that where you just, you're on they're on a set and they show you how to do things. And I'm like, but it's with animals. Mm-hmm. I think it's like as a show, it's still pretty relevant because like the animal facts don't change the claymation i think is the only thing that really dates the show in my opinion like it really okay. dates the show i mean in the use of like puppets for the most part like we don't really do that anymore but you know besides sesame street but i think it's it's obvious it's an early show but like if you were to play it in front of like a little kid i think that would still be mm-hmm. as i relevant think a little to them. yeah i think a little kid would still like watch like watch it and be yeah, they might be con- confused by the animation that happens in it, but you know, yeah. like I think they would still be pretty relevant to them. I it has been a really long time since I've seen it. However, I didn't realize I was going to remember as mu- of much of the episode as I did. And I did really, yeah. And I was just like, I don't think I've seen this since. Like maybe it, I probably saw reruns. Like as a kid, like they said they ran reruns from even though it ended in two thousand until two thousand nine. Yeah, they ran reruns until two thousand and nine. I'm like, guys, it was only on for three seasons. Holy shit, it's a lot of reruns. But I'm I'm sure I've seen reruns of the show and all that, but. I remembered a lot of it. Like they went to, they went by that snack machine and instantly like, Oh yeah, I remember the snack machine and the brothers have the little foods that they have in it. Like there's pizza in their snack dispenser right next to Zaboomaboo's food and all that. The, the, the music for <laughs> like the theme song and then like Zaboomaboo's music and everything like that. Absolutely. Just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, yep. Mm-hmm. The, even the exit song. That they played like I, I remember all of that really, really well. But it was just, it's a really nostalgic show, but like in a really positive way. When I was, I was telling Ani this before, but when I had my very first university anthropology class, one of the the professor for that class during the semester, he loves ring-tailed lemurs. He adores okay. ring-tailed lemurs well the Kratt brothers uh, eventually like they had they did they continued like their career and like doing nature stuff and things like that and later down the road they had a different kind of nature show that was for adults instead like it's like an animal planet show or something like that but they'd go around pretty much doing the same thing they were doing in Zabumafu and telling you about animals and teaching you about animals and being goofy while they did it like in the lemur episode, which my college pre- professor didn't have really a lesson for one of the days. So he just played the Krat Brothers show, the adult version. And he like, we just watched the lemur episode and like they were hopping around because like ringtail lemurs hop in a very specific way. And like the Krat Brothers were hopping along in the same way and like all that. So it was pretty much exactly the way it is. Like they didn't. They didn't change the way they interact with animals. They were just as goofy and having fun and all that. And it was just informational. It's just without the claymation and the talking puppets. So, and they're, this is not, we are not sponsored by them in any way, but for anybody who's interested, they're going on tour. So have fun with that. So go Go on tour for Misty because she can't go. Yeah, they're going on tour, I think, in, like, the Northeast and Canada and stuff like that. So, you guys can go, anybody living there can go see them. But, uh, but yeah, like, it was, it was really, it was really interesting. I, I still love the show. My dog, Little Bit, is black and white, the way Zabumafu is, just with more black than white. And her, one of her nicknames is Labulafu. Because <laughs> she's the same color as, as Zabumafu. Because one of the things I call her is Labu. I don't know why, 
But so one of her nicknames is Labulafu because it it sounds like Sabumafu, and like that's I I have not seen. I don't even know if I thought of that when I first gave her that nickname. But that is one of my dog's nicknames is Labulafu for Zabumafu. And uh, and Zabumafu, who was a very real lemur, uh, his granddaughter was just born, so which is adorable. And this is, I think, one of the only shows or movies or anything that we've watched that I have seen and Ani has not seen, and which is rare, <laughs> like really rare, because <laughs> we it's all true. know I'm I'm terrible about like pop culture of any kind. But yeah, this is one of those shows that I've I've seen and I've seen a lot. Okay, and I have I, to ask you: Have sure. you seen Roly Poly Oli? Mm-hmm. I have. Okay. Do you remember PB and J Otter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's been a long time. Well, that's, <laughs> like, that's a flashback name. Like, <laughs> But yeah. Yeah, there are some of those really old school, old school things. And like, I, I would literally thought of us watching this just because we're doing a, another round of Jungle June. And Ani and I have been thinking of shows and things like that to watch. But we also wanted to try different types of content. We're trying shorter form content. And I thought maybe now would be a good time to try it with a show that just literally popped into my head. I follow them on Instagram. I follow the Crap Brothers on Instagram. <laughs> so I see their stuff once in a while. And I would, and it just dawned on me, like, you know what? <laughs> we could we could watch the first episode of Zaboomafu. And I love it. I love it too. Yeah. I I love I really love the show. I've always really loved the show. I that theme song just once in a while it just will get stuck in your head. I and it's just one of those ones that just it's easy to get stuck in your head. And yeah, yeah, I I I love I mean like I have always really loved animals. I mean we both have. But my mom is always really big on like helping animals and volunteering with animals and like doing all kinds of stuff. Like we fostered cats for a really long time and she volunteered at all kinds of stuff and she's worked in all kinds of pet stores and stuff like that. So like animal shows like these were really common in my house growing up. So my mom was very big into, into that kind of stuff. So we watched these and yeah, it's just one of those shows, one of those shows that was just always on. And I guess for potentially 10 years as it ran with the whole three runs. So but for anybody who would like to go back and watch it, it's on Amazon Prime. Like, they have the seasons on Amazon Prime, which I thought was really cool. Because I was honestly, when I thought of watching it, I'm like, who on earth would have it? Like, who would have this? <laughs> and apparently Amazon does. So, but I love All this. Right. I, I love this show. It's it's such a good show. I think it's still relevant. And a little unhinged, maybe, with the claymation, possibly. <laughs> I, yeah. Mm-hmm. To a nine-year-old, no. To someone who's in their thirties, someone who was meant, who for someone who was who this show was meant for, like our generation. Yeah, not a concern. Yeah, watching it as an older part of that generation. Yeah, a little concerning. Like when I was like, I say this six. as quote unquote concerning. As the girl who grew up watching Red and Stimpy, like, religiously. Fair enough. That was one of my favorite shows growing up, and my mom had no fucking clue. My dad had no clue. I had no clue. I love yeah. that fucking show, and I'm going, that's a dog, and that's a cat, and he looks like a rat. And st- Fair enough. And I'm like, this is this is comedy gold. This humor is great. It's so weird. I love it. As an adult, yeah. going, oh, oh, there's a lot of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of adult content there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And you are currently watching SpongeBob. Are you watching SpongeBob? Why aren't you getting all those lovely references? Yeah, I honestly, I think I've seen the first couple of seasons now. I think it is. I haven't watched it in a little while. I haven't really had time. But I found a lot of references (laughs) that I didn't realize were SpongeBob references and thought they were just internet references. And I was just like, okay, it does make, I will say it makes the internet make more sense. (laughs) It does make the internet make more sense. Like there'll be things that'll be on there and I'm just like, 
didn't know it was a SpongeBob reference. I knew it was a reference to something, <laughs> but like, didn't know it was a SpongeBob reference. So it's helped a little, I guess. But yeah, I I love the show. I'm glad we watched it for Jungle June. For anybody who's curious as to what Jungle June is, Ani and I have done last year and now this year with the podcast is like a jungle themed episodes for the month of June. Last year, that was watching like Jurassic Park and some, and we watched Indiana Jones and things like that. So you guys can go listen to those episodes this year. We're doing a couple of different things instead. Like we had last year, we had a two shot D and D campaign themed in the jungle. So we won't be doing that one this year, but we will be trying some other things like some shorter form content and we're going to try to do some reviews and talk about episodes of things that we've watched before we record and then record the episodes just to see what you guys think the episodes for those will be shorter but it might be more interesting to hear more cohesive thought rather than reactive thought so (laughs) you know not that Ani and I can ever really be accused of cohesive thought but you know and if anyone thinks that I have a cohesive thought is Smoking and a, something. An attempt is being made, in all honesty, I'm going to I'm going to agree with that just because I'm in the middle of editing the D and D episode where you just call out Thinder and fucking Daddy Dragon. <laughs> dragon Daddy or whatever the big dragon daddy or whatever the It fuck started it with Big Dragon because he calls him out little dragon. Uh-huh. And you both vetoed that one real quick. Oh. And then it became dragon. I had daddy. to listen to it. <laughs> Again, and I'm listening to you. I'm just like, oh, like, well. And the thing is, no right before you said it, I'm thinking to myself, she's gonna call him Big Dragon, and you fucking. <laughs> like, oh, wish I wasn't right. It is worse hearing it out loud. So you know, you know, anything else? The to things add you on? deal with to add. One of the first things that caught my attention was when they say that they're the Krat Brothers. Krat. I honestly thought they said the Crack Brothers, and I'm like, that's an unfortunate name. <laughs> Krat. K- R- K-R-A-T-T, I believe. Yes, the Crack Brothers, and I'm like- Crack Brothers. The who now? Not the Crack Brothers, the Crack Brothers. Yeah. <clears throat> that's all I got. Oh, well, if anybody would like to go down that, like, 90s- Rabbit hole? Rabbit hole of nostalgia- you can check that out on Amazon. Again, none of this is a plug. We're just enjoying the throwbacks. I hope you guys Honestly. enjoyed this episode and our new recording style. Tell us what you think, whether or not like you like it. You want us to go back to what we were doing before. You want to see a mishmash of both in the future. And we'll go from there. That Because this way we thought we could talk about a show... And not get so deep in the plot that we have to do, like, a whole season. Not that the Krat Brother show, like, has, like, an overarching plot the way, like, Fox Machina did. But we're looking at kind of introducing some content without having to go through every single episode of a series. Especially if we're doing television shows. That way we can talk about them and just kind of provide some com- commentary, context, and things like that. Without having to do, like eight episodes of the podcast being for one TV show. So tell us what you guys think of that idea. If you have any ideas on other things you'd like us to watch or react to. We just got through doing some other short form videos and we reacted to some very old school YouTube videos from Charlie the Unicorn and Red vs. Blue and Harry Potter Puppet Pals. And there is an exclusive episode with video on our instagram so go check out our instagram and you will see us react and dance to the new manuma song which is a plague upon our houses (laughs) it really is but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this and we will see you guys next time bye 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 Tune in next week for more fuckery because we have some serious questions and concerns.